Hi, today's topic is how to build your own SSL web server with the ESP32. And for the usage, it's just an S for secure after the HTTP, but it's very important that everything sent over the air is encrypted. And to set up an encrypted web server, we have to generate our web server keys, the key for the web server, himself and and if you want to use a self-signed certificate then we also have to generate keys for the self build it certificate authority and if we want to use a certificate created by a real authority then we have to generate a certificate request and send it to the authority and get the signed certificate back and we can import it to our web Web server. So for this demo I've set up a web server with TLS version 1.2 and use also a self-signed certificate to run the server. So we have to use a special function from our browser so that we trust the server because it's not in the chain of trust. And the server also provides some image data and also a small HTML side so we can switch on GPIOs as we like and the state of the GPIO is kept in the non-volatile storage so if a reset occurs all the GPIOs are set back to the state on that they are before the reset. And for the demo I've set up four GPIO pins GPIO pin 19, 18, 5 and number 13 and on the first GPIOs I set up just an LED for blinking. It's just tied to ground with a small resistor. In this case, I'm using a 220 ohm resistor. And the GPIO pin number 13 is tied to a N-channel MOSFET and steer the gate of the MOSFET. And the MOSFET steers a LED or a chain of LED that uses about 12 volt. So we can use our 3.3 volt device to steer a much higher voltage and also a much higher current. And just some words about this MOSFET I use. It's an IRLR3103. This version, that's the DPEG version. I use this because I have it available and also I can clip the crocodile clips to the leads and I don't have to solder to maybe a SOT. 23 package. And also this fits to our LED because I can use it clearly at 12 volts for the LEDs and also the 55 amps rating is much more than we use. And it's a logic level gate MOSFET and we have a very low gate threshold voltage, about one volt. So it fits clearly to our ESP32 with a high level of 3.3 volt. So let's have a look at the bench. This is our setup. It's a little bit messy but just for the demo. Use my also my mobile phone with the Firefox browser and as you see if I switch on the lights on GPIO pin 30 all the LED lit up and also the current usage on the power supply rises up. So I switch it off again. And as you see we can also switch on, on and off the LEDs. Also just the small yellow LED, it's a little bit difficult to see, but it switched also on and off. And we can also use GPIO pin 18, switch on and off as you see. And also our GPIO pin 5, just remotely. And now our LEDs again. So this is the MOSFET, it's a little bit bad to see, but I have much, much just a roll lying around as you see. So so maybe I can rise up the voltage again so that you see the LED is live and we can also gain up the current level a little bit so that we don't jump into the constant current filter. 
So let's switch it off and on and look at the power supply you see and the current is also rising up again. So let's switch the other LEDs off and just at the least we switch off the LEDs and you see the current consumption is going down again. So let's switch it on and off again. So that's the small demo for today. And just some words before we go into deeper into the code. All the source codes you find on my GitHub page and also the link is in the description. So check it out. So this example is based on example code provided by Espressive with some small changes. So I'm using the OpenSSL server example and just start at the bottom. First we jump into this app main routine and initialize the non-votile flash memory. Then I initialize the GPIOs with this function and this just read out the non-votile memory to set the GPIOs. And the GPIOs, there's a small array I've built it and in this array there are the LED configured and just the state of the LED. So we have GPIO pin number 5 and it's switched off in the beginning and GPIO pin 13, 18 and 19 and so on. And if you want other GPIO pins just write it here in the array. So so that's the GPI opens. Then this is just the original example. We start up the Wi-Fi with our own Wi-Fi settings and the own password for our Wi-Fi. And after the Wi-Fi is connected, the Wi-Fi event handler is called. And if we are connected, then the OpenSSL client is initialized and the client generate a demo thread. And the thread is the whole functionality of the web server. So we have our certificate, we have our private key, and we have also a small logo for our web server. And and then this is all the setup and as mentioned I use the TLS version 1.2 server method and then we set up our certificate, our private key, we set our sockets and also the port and the port is just the HTTPS port. It's the number 443 and then we just listen to the socket. And if the our browser builds up a connection then the the handshake is established, the SSL or TSL handshake. And if the handshake is succeeded, then we just check the get message. If we get a request for our GPI opens or the main page, or maybe we get a request for our logo. And that's it. So here we can see just a fresh startup. I just press the reset button on the ESP32. Just let's see how the debug messages displayed in the PuTTY terminal. So first we start with a connection to our Wi-Fi. That's the hot zone. And as you see, the certificate and the private key is read by the SSL server and the socket is created and binded. And the server is listened on the port. 443 the HTTPS socket port and waits for a client. First of all we have to get the IP address from our device so that's this is here it's um, 192 168 43 and 197 so I go to the browser and put the HTTPS and the address so so let's start with this address and see what's going on so we see we have a connection received but our browser says this is not a trusted connection so I go to extended and I just insert an exception for this connection. That's in German, but it's the same on, on English. So I say, yes, I want the exception. Then we can start up the web server. So that 
it's only a step we have to do once. Once the exception is inserted into the browser, we don't have to do it anymore. And this is our state. So I can show the, this is the logo and some message. And we have all our, for our GPI opens some buttons we can click. So when I click here, you see the message is sent to the server and the whole page is sent back again. So the button changes the color and also the GPIO pin is switched on and off. So let's do it with GPIO pin 13. And I see my LED is lit up, turn it off. So it's very disturbing and very bright LEDs. You don't see it in a camera, but they are very bright. And that's the reason why they all glued to the heat sink. So maybe we can also see, we can go back and see the non-volatile storage. So here this is the values updated to the non-volatile storage with the GPI Open 13. And as you see, then the whole page is sent back to the client. And what can we do else? We can switch GPI Open 13 on again. So we see that on the non-volatile storage, the value is updated to one. So, and if you miss the getting of the logo, I've set the cache mechanism for this logo. So not always the whole picture have to go over the client connection. It's just read once and the browser keep it in the cache, but you can switch it on or off just like you wish. And just switch on GPI open 18 and you see that's all the messages and our client and I can use my mobile device or also my PC for switching on and off the ESP32. And just one thing I have to mention, that's why I use the non volatile storage, which the GPI open 13 off and all other are switched on. So we can see after reset that all the states are collected and kept. So just press the reset and let's see what's going on. Our Wi-Fi connection is set up again. And as we see here, this is the state of our GPI opens. GPI open five is set to one, like our picture. GPI open 13 is set to zero, so it's off. And where are the others? So, so I don't know why GPI open 18 is not initialized yet. So let's initialize them. So let's see what's going on. GPI open 18 is set to value one. And GPI open 19 also setting up. So let's press reset again. So now it seems to work. So sorry. I don't know, but now it's working. So let's call the main and just one trick. You can also click on the logo and get the main page. So we see it here. This is our get request and we just request the slash. That's the main entry point for HTTP. So I hope you enjoyed the video and learn something and please support me and give me a big thumbs up and also write some comments if you have some wishes or some additional feedback to my video, please write it in the comments. And as always, all the source codes you find on my github page and i wish you a nice day and bye bye